here we have a Squire Stratocaster, Fender Squire Stratocaster. I believe it's from the 1980s. Uh, it's well, well played, well worn. It's had the bridge pickup changed and it's here to be refretted. And you can see that there's a fair amount of wear in the frets. Uh, they've been leveled already, I'm told. And so you can see that the frets are quite low. I would say it's touch and go as to whether or not they could be leveled again, but they would be getting very low and it would be easier to play if they have more of a crown and the guitar is more likely to stay in tune, properly intonated, if we have a decent crown on the fret. So the guitar looks in reasonable condition, it's a bit scratched in places. It's got a few dents in it, a few scratches. And this is going to be set up with the tremolo floating. So the first thing we need to do is just check that the neck is straight. Uh, it's not got strings on it and it's probably not had strings on for a while. So I'll just find out whether or not the neck is straight um, and then make sure I can adjust the truss rod to get it straight. Uh, to adjust the truss rod, I'm going to have to take the neck off. Okay, so the good news is that the neck is pretty much straight. It's not perfectly straight, it's got a few grooves worn into the fretboard, but by and large, it's straight. So next thing to do is to take the neck off um, and then we'll give everything a bit of a clean before starting to refret. Okay, before we're taking the frets out, I'm just going to give the fretboard a, a bit of a clean. Uh, Napfa is quite good for this. It does take the oils out of the wood though, so they've got to be replaced afterwards. But it dries very quickly. So it doesn't leave, it doesn't doesn't let the wood swell.
Okay, so the frets are in. Um, I've put some glue behind them. So I'll leave them for a couple of hours just for the glue to cure. And then we can get rid of the sharp edges, bevel them over, and then think about um, leveling and recrowning. So we've checked that the neck is perfectly flat using this slotted gauge. And put some tape down to protect the frets. So next thing we need to do is to just put some marker on the frets. And this allows us to work out when the frets are perfectly level because as we run our leveling beam over the frets we should see the same amount of material come off each fret but if one fret is high or another fret is low then you will see that in the amount of material that comes off the fret so if fret is low it won't take the marker off if a fret is high, the marker will come off. And what we're looking for is for every fret to have no marker left. And then we know that the frets are level. So there's one fret down here, 21, 20, 19, 18, the 18th fret. We're only just starting to remove material. So I just need to go a little bit further. So we can check if the frets are level using a fret rocker. So this is just a device with a straight edge and it has straight edges of different lengths. And you span this straight edge across three frets. And if the, fr if the frets are level, then there is no rocking movement.
if a fret is high or another fret is low, then there will be a rocking mo motion and you can work out which frets are high and which frets are low. And if you have low frets or high frets, then you need to go back and re-level. So of course, when you're doing fret leveling like this with a fret leveling beam, if you take material off every fret, then it should all work out very nicely. Okay, good. Now, one thing that you can do, if you wish, is you can just have a little bit of fall away on the last few frets. So, um, this is often done about where the neck meets the body. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So, probably around about this level. So, what we can do we can just build up a couple of layers of tape and protect the rest of the frets. And then just do a few sweeps. On the last few frets. So what we need to do next is we put the line back onto the top of the frets with the marker and now we're going to recrown the frets because by taking material off the top we flatten the tops Then we use a crowning file to put a crown back onto the top of the frets. And we do that by making, gradually making the size of this dark line smaller. So we get a very thin stripe of black across the top. And then we know that we've crowned each uh, fret to roughly the same level. So for this I'm going to try, um, I have a number of different ways of doing it. Uh, this is a called a centered Z file. Um, it's supposed to be the easy way to do it. Um, I quite like it. I have another method that I, I think I prefer, but I'm going to give this a go because these are quite narrow frets and I think it'll work well. fret has been done and we've got a thin black line across the top and if you compare that to the next fret the black line is thick so we're going to go all the way down and, and reframe each of these frets.
Okay, hopefully now you can see that each of these is quite a thin line across the top. Um, because we haven't touched the very top of the fret, we know that the frets are still level. So the next step in the process is to just get rid of the scratch marks that the files have left behind. So we use increasingly fine levels of sandpaper to do that. Um, and I just use a, a fret rubber. Um, I don't really like using these too much, but they're quite useful just because they're slightly flexible. And you can just run them, run them up and down the fretboard. So the last step um, is to use wire wool. Now, not everybody likes wire wool because the metal filings can go everywhere, but with a fender neck, because this is nowhere near the pickups, then uh, this works really well. You can use alternatives, sort of a micro mesh type material, um, which is fine. I, I just really think that the wire wool works really nicely, you've just got to be careful with it to make sure that you don't leave filings that can get into the pickups. So the last step is to apply a little bit of metal polish to the frets and we can polish them with a Dremel tool and a little buffing wheel to give it a nice shiny finish. Hopefully no scratches and nice and smooth to play.
So here's our Fender Squire Stratocaster. Um, the neck's been uh, refretted and uh, the frets have been levelled and crowned. Um, the guitar is to be set up with the tremolo floating. So there are lots of different ways of doing this. Um, but one way, which I quite like, is to just uh, raise up the tremolo and put something underneath it like this. And I actually think this is this is really hard. So I'm tempted to probably loosen the springs on the back. Okay, looks like it's going to need a, a new nut. So this is the original nut for the guitar, but it needs a new one because by refretting the um, the neck, the frets are higher and the nut slots are too low. They can be repaired, but it's a bit of a mess. Um, so the nut was already cracked, but it cracked again when I took it out. Um, but you can see Look something like that. So I've made a new one from a, a blank piece of bone. 
Um, the first thing you need to do with this is to make sure that the uh, bottom of the nut matches the radius of the neck because with these early Fender style guitars, not only is the neck radius, but the slot in the for the nut is radius as well. So if you've just got a, a nut with a flat bottom, then it doesn't sit properly. So that's the first thing. And then once the nut fits, then you can use the half pencil trick to just scribe a line. Like that. And then you end up with a nut like that. And that line helps you uh, work out where to put the slots, how deep to go. Um, you can't follow it exactly, but it'll get you reasonably close. Then you can use other methods later to get the height of the strings, the nut slot itself, correct.